3D Funshine Care Bear Acrylic Nailer Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everybody! In today's video I'm going to show you the first video in a very small Care Bear series and I know that there are so many Care Bears that when I was looking and trying to pick out the three that I wanted to do it was just such a hard decision. So if I didn't do your favorite one I'm sorry but I do have three I'm going to do. Today's video is Funshine and then I'm also going to do Grumpy and Cheer Bear uh, this weekend. So definitely come back for those and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So on all of these I began with a very thin gradient background of a very light almost white blue to kind of a light to medium blue. So I've got that first light blue at the cuticle area and then the slightly darker blue at the tip of the nail and very gently just blend those together. And then after that is done and you have that blend, the reason we kept it so very thin is because I'm going to add some encapsulated clouds to this design. So I'm going to take some white acrylic and the acrylic I'm using isn't a bright white for this, it's a shimmery kind of pearlescent white. And I'm going to sculpt my very fluffy clouds just across the background, just very easy, very quick clouds. And then after they're sculpted in, then I'm going to encapsulate the nail with a layer of clear acrylic. And the reason to do that for this particular design is because if you were to go to file it into shape, those clouds are taller than the background and it would certainly file the clouds right off and you would lose them. So to encase this design is vital because it is keeping those clouds all pristine and perfect and fluffy looking. So after you have that nail perfectly encased with clear acrylic, then we're going to file it into shape with an e-file. If you don't have an e-file, you can use a hand file or whatever filing method you prefer. Or if you have the acrylic sculpting skills of a rock star and you don't have to file at all, we'll just skip that step entirely. But now I'm going to start sculpting Funshine with a very pale yellow acrylic. And I'm going to begin with his head right about right about the apex area of the nail. So I want these bears to be a little bit on the petite side on the nail. That way you can still see that fluffy cloud background and they don't totally fill in the nail so that the background is just gone because that blue gradient sky is just so pretty. We have to be able to see it still. So I've got, I've got Funshine's head sculpted into place with the little ears and then I'm going to sculpt his belly and then I'm going to add his arms. So each of my Care Bears, I gave them a different position that they're sitting in or standing in, I suppose, a different arm position mostly. And so if you wanted to mix it up and switch up which positions they're in, you certainly could, and you could say, just alter them. Or if you want to do just one of them, you can see how their position is sculpted and then apply it to a different bear. And it's the same thing if you want to do any of the other ones, because like I said, there are so many different Care Bears to choose from. You could take the basic sculpting principles from any of these three videos that I have on them and then switch up their colors and the pattern on their belly and you're pretty much good to go. So now with white, I'm going to be adding his belly color. So just kind of place that bead down and then very gently pat it into that circle. Getting an acrylic circle is way easier than painting a circle. So if you haven't practiced much at, much at sculpting acrylic circles like that, uh, you, if you just take a little bit of time to get them down, it really isn't that hard. The key is to not overwork the acrylic. So once you place it down, you just have to very gently pat it in the middle and it'll form the circle on its own going to add a bit more shape and dimension to his face, give his cheeks a little bit more of a poofiness look to them, and a little bit more acrylic on the forehead. And I'm going to go back and sculpt the second leg. So what I like to do with acrylic, and I know I've mentioned this before, but in case you haven't heard it, is I like to hop around from area to area that I'm sculpting so that if I'm working on something right next to a different part, like for instance, this leg is right next to the other leg and the belly, I'm not going to mess them up and ruin them by sculpting a new piece next to them. So after I sculpted the first leg and the belly, I moved on to working on his face for a minute and then I came back. And that just gives the original acrylic a chance to cure and become immobile so that I don't, you know, stab it with my brush and accidentally smudge it or something. I'm going to go through and add hands and little toes where I need to, still with that pale yellow acrylic that I was using from the beginning. And depending on how much sculpting you want to do with acrylic, or say you zoomed in a little bit on the image, you could sculpt their facial features like their eyes and stuff too with acrylic. But since mine are really so small, there just was not room to do those with acrylic with what my style is usually. And so I did not want to do their eyes and their mouths with acrylic. So if you don't want to, you don't have to, but if you want to do more sculpting with acrylic, you can. Or if you want to even back it off and do less and say, 
just paint just sculpt a very basic shape for the bears and then add all the finer details later with paint and outlining you can do that too it's kind of whatever your strong suit is and you can play into your strong suits so if you if you're somebody who's just getting started with sculpting with acrylic you don't have to sculpt nearly as much detail as I did but if you're somebody who is completely fluent in acrylic sculpting but your paint skills just aren't quite there yet you can do more acrylic sculpting and back off the painting some too so it's up to you and like I said whatever your style is and whatever your strong suits are so now on this little bear I'm going to take some orange paint and do all the outlining so this is just your classic pumpkin type orange and it's going to look like a nice vibrant outline against that pale yellow color so you don't have to go through with a black for these characters because you don't really want them to look that harsh and that dramatic you want them to stay very soft and fluffy looking so we've got the outlines around the face and the ears and the arms legs belly also the things you're going to need to outline are you're going to add some facial features if you didn't sculpt them already so you're going to want to add in the eyes and smile and those little things that aren't in there yet the other thing that funshine needs outlined is the sunshine in the middle of the belly and i did those outlines with orange paint as well and then i filled them in with yellow so i'm going to start with just that little circle in the middle with orange then i'm going to move on to the mouth okay i still hop around with all my painting and stuff i kind of just jump back and forth from where I'm working and it's just what works well for me if it doesn't work well for you you can switch it up and do it however you prefer so there's those outlines for the eyes add some eyebrows when you're working with acrylic paint which is what I'm doing so this is like your acrylic craft paint that you can buy at any kind of a hobby or craft store I like to thin it out slightly and not enough to dilute the pigment in the paint, just enough to thin it out and make it a little bit more workable. I also don't use an artist paint because those are going to be thicker. So if you use like a, my favorite brands are um, Americana and Ceram Coat that are available in the US, but you just have to find one that works well for you. But a really thick artist paint like Liquitex or Master's Touch, etc. There's a whole bunch of different brands that are a thick artist paint. Those aren't going to work very well for nails. Those are much better suited for a canvas. So if you do have those paints, you can try playing around with and using them, but I would recommend picking up the dollar bottles that are super inexpensive instead because they actually work better for this circumstance. After all the painting's done, I'm going to apply a layer of gel sealer over the background and some matte tap coat over Funshine, and that is it for this design. The other two will be uploaded on Friday and Saturday of this week, so check back for those. And if it's already past that time frame and you want to look for them, there will be links in the description box below, and I will see you next time. Bye!